Another prepping data challenge stream by me, Will. Today we're on week four. We're looking at another challenge here where we've got a data set that we're going to need to prepare into a different format so we can use later on for visualizing or whatever. And as always, we're going to be doing this a different way. We're going to be doing some coding for this. So we've got Python, R, and SQL in that order. Uh, so for this challenge, week four, uh, before we've been working with CSV files, today we've given the dreaded Excel file where it's kind of the same, but we've got to deal with these different these different sheet tabs coming in here as well. Uh, so we've got to input this and then we've got to pull it all together and make one nice file to come out at the end. As always, we have our list of instructions on what we've got to do and we've got our output where we've got to get to. So. I've already gone ahead and downloaded this data set. Now I've got this here in Python, ready to go. So we're going to start up with Python first. As always, I'm going to be using pandas and numpy. Very good, very highly usable uh, packages from Python for doing this kind of data prep work for you. OK, so first up, I've got this file as well. So you can see over here, on prep data, I've got this Excel file. I've gone and head and downloaded that, put that on uh, my local drive. So I'm going to refer to that. So in the past, we've been using uh, where we go and assign a data set. So I'm going to take this straight away, work with this. So usually, you would assign your data set, you'll read your file, in previous cases, a CSV file. And then you'll go and assign that to a target. Uh, so an Excel file is not going to be too different. So it's going to be instead of read CSV, it's going to be read Excel, which is available for you with pandas, note the PD. It's not going to be this file, it's going to be this one, week four new customers. So use that. Customers, it's not going to be dot CSV, it's going to be dot LAS. Right. No, to next. Okay. Last thing is we've got to name the sheet or that we're going to pull from. And if you remember on the task, they were. You can see them here. See them here in like different January, February, March, May, which is fine. I can I can do that. So if I go for say sheet, sheet equals. Yeah. Let's see how that does. Ooh. And then what I want to do is just print that data frame, just so I can see that print that data frame to see what's going back. Give that a run. Uh, unexpected argument sheet. Hmm. Okay. Should it be? It's usually. Okay, so it wants, um, I feel like it's asking for sheet name here, so we'll try that. Name, yeah, equals box. We want that. Ah, uh, missing dependency. Ah, uh, yeah, so there's sometimes it will require this open. IXL engine I've used this before. So if you have a functionality here called engine, you can go open pi Excel. That run that. Oh, you want me to install it? Okay. Uh, so I just go pip install open pi Excel. Um, go and install that package or that module. Okay, let's try again. Okay, okay, so now it's coming back. So I'm getting some data back here. You can see this coming through here. Again, it looks like a bit of a mess, but okay, so I've got one month. Could go through and do this with all 12 months. I don't really want to do that. What I want to do is try and 
make like a little loop to go and read through all the different sheets and return that data to me. So let's let's see what we can do here. So if I change the sheet name here for none, it should go and read all those files for me. That. Okay, so that has gone and read every single sheet for me. Okay. What I'm going to do is call this data frame that data frame df. What I want to do is try and find out what those sheet names are. So if I do df doc is if I can get those. It's a dictionary object that wasn't quite what I hoped for. Okay, dictionary keys. Yeah, so I've got these dictionary keys come back here. So you can see the individual months here. Good. So if I go for, say, first one, if I pick, use this sort of bracket notation, pick the first one, can I get January? And uh, not subscriptable. Cool. Uh, just tab names. Or oh, potentially there was one I think called uh there was one called sheet name. Possibly bring the print that. No, it doesn't <laughs> doesn't recognise that. Oh well. Uh, so if I do my df.keys, put that to list, my column, df.keys, Okay, so still coming back with those dictionary keys. I'm going to head over to Stack Overflow quickly. Stack Overflow, I'm just going to go Python convert to, uh, to list. Oh no, <laughs> one of the ones with stairs. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Dictionary to a list. This is if I got the right terminology. Score keys. Um, okay, so there is a actually a function here from um, okay. Let's see that too. Not working for me either. Well, sure, there was something like sheet name. Right. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back in time a little bit and try and find this. I know I've done this before. That's the benefit of doing some of these tasks, because you know you've done this way before. So uh, this is my GitHub 
age where I've got all my solutions for Python before. So this is where I was importing my Excel file. But yeah, so sheet name is none. Okay. And then for tab and item. Okay, so this is where I'm assigning that to a tab. So I can just copy this in. Okay, so let's go back to this one. So I've got data frame name for that. Okay. So we so far that is that thing at the top. Uh so all day, all tabs that back to the right. all data frames is that for tab and concatenate all the data frames together. So what this is doing is doing my For the time being, okay. Ooh. Okay, so we have some issues coming in already. Uh, worry about those in a second. So what's going on here is that I'm reading in that Excel file as it was before, not specifying a sheet name, just doing all of them, and then creating a list for all of my data frames to go into. Okay, uh, so what's happening then is I'm going through, finding my different sheets, appending them to this list, this data frame list. So I'm giving the data frame a new sheet name, which is going to be the tab name, all tabs, dot items. Okay, so it's dot items I need to find. You can go and print that, let's we'll see. It's all. I'm stopped. Okay, so this is, I mean, just listing all the contents of that. that okay. Okay, so it's going through for every data frame in all tabs to this. Then combine them together, then concatenate, which will union them all together at the end and ignore the index. And then we've got that print at the end. Okay. So let's get back to the other issue we've got, which is so here we have some different variations of the word demographic coming through here, which we're going to need to tidy up because uh, we want them all to conform to the same column. So what I'm going to do here is go and under here, I'm just going to go and define df.columns, give them all the same column headings. Okay. This in. Thanks. Demographic. So if I rerun that, that should all line up. Okay, so now we can see only getting back five columns, which is what I wanted. So I name the first four columns consistently. Fifth column is just that sheet name coming through. Uh, so that's that's done. That's on these two. So what we've done is we've read all those tabs in, stacked them on top of one another. Yes, and then some of the fields are matching up. So we've done that. Okay, so we can go in. There's instructions up there. Save that. 
will make a joining date field based on the joining date, uh, table names, and the year 2023. Okay, so we're going to have to do a date from parts. So I've got the day here, I've got the month here as a name. I'm just going to need to go and put those two together. Now, how am I going to change this so we have exactly... I need to go and change this month into a number for, um, for Python to pick up the month itself. So I can build a, build a date here for this, but I need to have that changed to a month number. Okay, so what I want to do is go, just go with my combined data frame. I'm going to call this joined joining month and this is going to be equal to so I've got to convert this so I'm going to have a little look see back so I'm pretty sure there there is like always a way to convert something to do with dates convert up name to uh, yes I am a human And where at? Okay, let's go for this. The string. For... Okay, so I can take that. I can do do some functionality here. Let's have a look at what I can do with it. Join him up to sheet name. Just to So that was okay. You're gonna use date time, okay? So it's saying this isn't a date field. Did you mean this? Okay. okay, back to Stack Overflow. Let's have a look at this a bit. Two date time or okay. but same one the name. Me. Yeah, this might be good. Okay, so we weren't too far off. So we okay, so this is converting it to a date, then just taking that last bit. Yeah. Okay. Let's go back. Time sheet name on my bind data frame. What might be? Yeah. Okay, let's give this a run. Yeah, that's good. Back. That's good. So we've got our joining month now. We've got our joining date. We just need to put these together. So, how am I going to do this? So, do something like joining date, date, which will be, can we just paste all these things together? So, I want to do 2023 dash 
plus joining month. See, shouldn't complain. Plus, we'll go with joining day at the moment and then see if we can zero later. So I know like the first one's going to be missing a zero. So let's go that. Ooh, okay. Yeah, can only kick out an extra. Um, go as type string. So what we're doing is converting that month to a string. Also convert that this one, that day to a string too. Ooh. Oh yeah, because we need another dash in there. So do that plus dash. Okay, and just this last bit. So I know I can do MP where, MP where. Uh, Good I Could I do the same format here? Could I try and convert it to a date like this instead? Because then, like, if I don't need to mess around with changing it, you know, adding in this, like, MP where clause, this if else. So if it's lower than, less than two characters, then add a zero. If not, uh, keep it how it is. So if I try and do this, Joining date. If I can convert it to a date format, it's going to be uh, percent y dash percent b percent. This is going to be month. Huh? Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's that's work. That's come together nicely. So I've got all those. Nice, so I've got that. Okay. Now we want to reshape our data. So we have a field for each demographic, for each new customer. Okay. Ooh. Okay, uh, so what I'm gonna do is just try and tidy this up. So what I'm gonna need to do is pivot this column, this value and demographic column. I'm going to need to pivot those, uh, but I'm going to need to keep the other columns fixed. Uh, so I want to reduce the number of columns I've got in the first place, just to make the pivoting a bit easier. Uh, to do that, I'm going to have a little look back at the challenge, what they want at the end. Okay, so they want this ID, joining date, and then these details for our customers. Okay, so I just need to keep these two. Uh, right, Python. I think. All this. And I'm just going to make this a list of columns just so I can reduce this down. So for my ID. Running date, demographic, and that's all good. That's Okay, so now I just need to go and pivot these two columns, keeping these two fixed. Okay, so I'm do I'm gonna call this pivot pivot data frame as in so E D pivot it what's my data frame? It's gonna be this combined. DF 
then my index is going to be these two. So my index, the things I'm going to be fixing are going to be ID and, and join date. Okay, what are my columns going to be? In this case, they're going to be demographic. My values are going to be values. So, so I'll print them both so we can see the difference, see if it's worked. Oh, not values. The key error, so on values, it's just value. Okay, so it has worked, but it's kind of gone a bit, bit mm, different, you say. So like, we have these two columns here, we then have the rest sort of floating above, which I don't really like. And I think there's a, always when we see this, it's a reset index. Reset, yeah, reset index. So that should convert those back into typical columns. Okay, yeah, that's good. Count type, date of birth, ethnicity, all looking good. Make sure the data types for each field are correct. Oh no. Um, so we can check this using my pivot df types. Pivot types. Was no inf. Okay, so yeah, so basically our date of birth isn't coming through as a date time. Count type is fine to be object, so is ethnicity in this case. But yeah, our date of birth we need to go and joyfully convert. Uh, so we've got to be careful with this because last time Python, it would convert some to English and some to American dates based on what was there. So this uh, would prefer it, would normally default to an American date uh, when we can see there's other, well, this here. Oh, actually they are an American date. So there's the day, month, day, month. Okay. So yeah. You'd be careful, but sometimes this might convert in different ways. And we learned the hard lesson last week. Uh, we spent a lot of time looking at this, so I'm definitely going to go back to this. So this is what we did last time. So we had to do in this case, replace this. So for our date of birth. This day of birth, put it there as well. So this was the format we had last time, which is your uh, date, time, timestamp includes the time. We don't need that this time. Uh, we were doing days, months. We know it's the other way around. So this is months, days. Okay. So if we do that, have a look at the data. Then we'll have a look to see if the conversion worked. We can see that's a date time now, but does it, is it right? Does it make sense? Yep, that's all good. That's looking good. Okay, remove any duplicates. Okay, we've got our pivot table. We need to remove any duplicates. If a customer appears multiple times, take their earliest joining date. Okay. So how we could do this, so there'll be different data in these entries depending on the joining date. So we can 
what we can do is do a ranking by this ID and order it by joining date. How, how do we do that? Um, right. I know <laughs> this is the problem. I remember how to do it in SQL. Can I remember how to do it in Python? It's a different thing. Rank root by order by. Yes, uh, please. I'm not a robot. Yes. Uh, oh. Go with this one. Sort so sort values by that, by that. Most of the way there. Tell us a bit more about itself. Uh, yeah, there we go. So this is this is how we want to write things. At first, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm. Yeah. Let's let's give it. Sort the values. Okay. So back to Python. So I want to sort my values. I want to sort by my. Give it df. The df so I've got by sort my values by do you do by just want to actually just to sort it by joining date send me equal true I can go call this rank I want to group my data frame by the ID and then just want to hmm do I need this I don't think I do I well, I can rank on joining date instead. Method first, sending true. And test this. I want to check whether this works first. Then potentially we don't actually need this first line, uh, this line here about sorting the values. If it's going to take the first by ascending values. Okay, let's move these two. Yeah, get rid of info. Don't need that. That run. Rank down here. Okay. Now I just need to filter where rank equals one. That was using loc. So f loc. I did this again last week. Here it is. So, okay, so my pivot table will equal pivot table dot loc, and then look up that column I want to filter on, rank. Rank equals. Don't need to put that in quotes. Run. 
so we've lost we've lost one person <laughs> okay um let's see what that person is so i do rank equals two so we know it's this id just do a little bit of filtering just to check that I'm getting the right person coming back that that okay yeah so okay in this case we can see for this person this one ID two different joining dates and that we've ranked that correctly just check if I get rid of that previous line does it still work Okay, as a thought, don't need that extra line, so we can get it. That's good. So uh, we can do our DF of rank equals one. That, win that. That all looks good. Yeah, it's good. We just need to go and output the data, which means just getting rid of some of the, that rank column. Uh, I think you can just do. it rank straight up delete B yeah so you can just delete that column click from there okay cool uh, nice I'm I'm happy with this let's go and like output this data I did this up a little bit That's looking better. Right now we can just go get my pivot DF to CSV and have a little look. Take what we did last time. So this whole file path, get the index. So 2023 slash Python outputs using the double double slash here to prevent any errors. So if I go this week four output, put that, that, there here. Actually, I can keep that delete with, it shouldn't matter in this case. Uh, okay, let's give this a run. Oh, that's come back. Back with something. Maybe. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, so here we go. So in our, my outputs folder, I've now got this, this extra file. So we know this is 289. How much have they got in this? Which is, yeah, two, 289. Okay, so we've got all the columns. So call that one. That one good that one's done okay cool we're there with that one let's move on to we've done a bit with hyphen so we're doing a bit of fancy work so we're looping through those different sheet names into a data frame concatenating them concatenate them all together including that sheet name as well and then we had a bit of fun converting that join month to an actual numerical month and then making that join date as well. Uh, after that, we then had to pivot. We then had to convert date of birth again to a date time and then do that little ranking trick to find the, to separate any out of these duplicate values by the earliest join date. And then write the file. Okay. So now let's go on to R. So as before, I've got all everything ready to go. I am using this uh, additional library this time called Read Excel, which is a like, R library for reading Excel files, probably guess. So let's start up again. So if I go DF 
equals read. Yeah, read Excel. You can see it here from this library as well. Um, so what's the path? Sheet as well. So we can do this. So we can do this. We did last time. Go back to previous. Copy this. This. And prepped. So this is week four. Customers. Let's stop. So after this, I can give it a sheet, not sheet, but a sheet. I can call that, say, May in this case. We'll have a look at May again, just to make sure we're getting that back. And then I can go and just say, hey, DF, and we can give that a run. You can see here, yes, that's coming back. We've got our dates coming back. It's all good. Um, that looks all right. Now, I'm going to try and do the same trick where we find out what those sheet names are and then try and do a loop over them to find each of them in these cases. So, uh, so can I do this one sort of Excel sheets? Yeah, Excel sheets. And then you give it a file path. So if I give it this Excel file, Call it sheets. Sheet names down there, and then we can have a look. I just type in sheet names into the console. So I've got basically a list of sheet names there, which is really helpful. So what I can do is I can write the same thing for Python. I can write for R, I can write a little loop. So I can say uh, for I in one, two, we call this length of my sheet names. Now there's other ways like you could do along the sequence. I'm very used to doing this. I suppose a bit stuck in my way uh, for doing this other method. So for this in this, so then you can go and put this in here. Contain sheet or sheet name, sheet names, and then square brackets, that I in there. So what this will do, a little bit wider. Uh, so what this will do is it will loop through my different tabs in my Excel file and then write that to this data frame column. Okay. So what I can also do is initiate a List of data frames. Yes. Assign that and call that that list then. That C and then all I can do is after I've done one data frame, I can add this to this to my list. So do my list, a list, and then I will put my data frame in that list. Okay. Then at the end of all of that, I should be able to have a look at that. So let's give this a go. Do these few lines. So I've got my sheet names. All I need to do is go for a list data frame. Okay, let's run really quickly. Let's go list, list of data frames. So yeah, it's come back with all this data, all the different, different data frames. So can I, what test can I do? Find list. DFs. Look at the test. <laughs> okay, that's 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 not what I wanted to do. All right. 
Stack Overflow, here we come. Uh, so R, uh, combine list of terms. Yes. Okay. Yep. The list of lists into a single data frame. Okay, yeah, this is. Okay, R bind list. Let's take this. Let's have a look. Unless it was test. No, it wasn't test. It was my list of list. <laughs> my list of DFs. Could not find function. Oh, great. <laughs> so let's go back to this one. Stop the data frames. Data frames. I make a list of data frames. Yeah, from my files, go for this. Ah, uh, okay. So I wasn't too far away. And that, yeah. Hi. Lost my files. Okay. I'm not sure how that will work with the Excel. Either way. Let's take this back to R. So a list, if I go and change this for sheet names, instead of read CSV, we go read Excel. Would be okay. So we're doing the same sheet, sheet names. So can I do we do test again? Can we do our bind? Data. Test. Damn it. Uh, hmm. So that post. Spring list, simulating a list. Combining a list of data frames yep, into a single data frame. Okay, so bind rows. This base case slower but not extra dependencies. Okay. Wait, wait a second. We're actually we've actually using this one, so I can take I'll take this one. See how this goes. If I go my data, uh, we have big data. Let's have a look and big data. Yeah. Okay, and you can see we've got other issues here. So we've got demographic coming back twice, different ways, different formats. So we're going to want to clean that up a little bit. So never mind. So we can do this pretty, pretty straightforwardly. So let's tidy up. So we've got a solution. That's the main thing. So we've got 
our different sheet names. We've got making a list here. Then what I can do is I can go and call this, take this, we'll do this section later. So if I call this, so I assign this to my data frame, I will then go and do data frame dot sheet name and then give it this pass in the actual sheet name it is while we're doing this. Now for what we had earlier, which was not sheet names, it was my data. My data which one we can assign that to our data frame. Okay. We also need to go and fix up those names as well of the columns. So I can do this using the names function. So names df. And I can go and give these some specific names. A, a list of names if you like. So id joining date. Get those in. Sync. So if you remember, R is pretty un unfair or not nice to anything that has a space in it. So we'll just give it a space for now. We'll see if that causes any problems later on. Generally, we'll just fill it with a dot and do that now. This doesn't work. Okay, let's give this one. So that, that looks pretty good to me. That looks like it's come back as expected. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That looks pretty quick as well. Okay. So input the data. We want a stack table. Some of the fields aren't matching. Yep, we've handled both of those criteria. Okay, so that's come along. We also we don't need this DF. So we've Done that so we've got our sheet names. Um, just put some notes here loop over tag. So, okay, make joining date, make a joining date field based on the joining day table names and the sh year. 2023. So this is why we brought in this sheet name as well. So we can we know we've got January here. Um I am definitely going to try and convert this using a bit of R. Can I get away with like always sort of keen to test with R so you can just convert things to a date? Can I just go ahead and just say take big big data dollar sheet name? Get away with just calling that a date, uh, unambiguous format. Okay, um, never mind. Let's go back. So, R uh, convert name to yep, not a robot. Use Lubridate, create a package. Okay. Okay. Let's go with that. So Lubridate, I'm pretty sure I don't have that installed, but look, it will tell me a voice. Like Lubridate. Okay, okay, I do, I do have that installed. So that was a 
right. Uh, so days a month. So yeah, so this that has loads of like useful date functionality in it. So if I go what's it? year, month, day, it's a function. Uh, stores character. Do, do, do. Okay, let's see if we can get away with this. So if I go 2023, and I go and pull in that sheet name. Data. Dollar. Joining date. Let's see if I can get away. No, no, you may not. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. Writing dates. Yeah, a lot of people are using this. So, so what we did in the last one was converted to converted to a date, and then from there went in um, some more. So maybe we can do the same here. Okay. Take this. So we're going to take the sheet name. Again. Big B in this case. That nope, don't want to play ball either. Okay, looking number. Only to five months, there's a built in month app. Okay, this promising. So, month, oh, month dot name. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Um, Go here, name this. We dated the sheet name. Okay, cool. That looks good. Go and make make a column. I'm going to call this uh, data dollar joining. That run. Okay, wants to do something else. I've probably gone a bracket. Yep. Okay. 
Okay, let's go back to this function, this lubridate function, see if it now works. No formats found. All formats failed to pass. Um, don't quite get why you would have a function year month date if then it couldn't do year month date. Uh, okay. Never mind, we can just go zero. These together with the dash. Dash state. Yep. Okay. That works. So I've got this now. So I've got this. Joining date. So that. So what I've done here is I've gone and used this. There's already month name in R as standard, which is really helpful for this. So I'm just matching this character to those month names. Yes, yeah, so I'm matching the names here. That numeric that can becomes my joining month. And then use that to make my date. So I make that year, month, day, and then I convert that to a date as well. It comes out nicely. Okay, so those two are good. Get this. Okay, so if I just have a look. Okay. In. Okay, so I've got, yeah, I've got my joining date there as well. Looks okay to me. Okay. Now we want to reshape our data so we have a field for each demographic for each new customer. So this is going to be taking this column demographic and pivoting it. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to tidy up some of these columns because pivoting is always a bit of a, bit of a pain. So I want to just have the columns they want to ID, um, they want to keep fixed, and then the columns that I will change. Reducing the number of columns here just makes that a bit easier. So if I go and just go and add big data equals big data, big data, uh, and then call it some of these. So Go and add my list. I've got some of them actually up here. Nice. So if I go and add in ID, I change this. So if I change this to joining date, nice. Do that. Do the big data. Okay. So let's come back. Now I've got to pivot it. So this is going to be pivoting. So this column to that column. Uh, to this column to you know, these rows into these columns. Okay, so last time we were pivoting the other way, so pivoting in this case to longer. So here I need tidy R where I'm pivot a bit wider in this case. Uh, so ask me for the data frame, which is big data, big data. And then the ID columns are going to be cow, but coals. Oh, Date. And then. What do you need? You should need 
a card. So you need what you want the names from. From equals We need values. Values from going to be okay. Let's go with this big data not found. Okay, we'll go with big data. Data, yay. Okay, so that's looking pretty much what I wanted it to look like, uh, which is great. I'm going to change, give this a name. I'm going to call this. DF pivot data my data frame pivoted pivoted so I've got that so I've got my data frame pivoted make sure all the data types are correct for each field okay uh, so to do this we do struct DF pivot gives us a little bit of information about our data frame so we can see here oh, i mean this this is us we can convert this to an integer that's okay um, the issue here is the date of birth is coming through as character again so we're going to need to change this to a date format so we'd be okay with doing this so we can first up do and change that in that one to an integer do df pivot dot id same thing and then do as it yeah spell it right yeah so that will work so okay right We can see that one's changed. Uh, now, yeah, oh, we just got to do the date. Uh, okay. Big data, join it. Uh, <laughs> no more big data. We are DF pivot and uh, joining date. Get this as date. Yeah. And then should specify the format here. So, okay, so this is month, day, year. Okay, so we go space slash month slash slash day slash year. Right. Just run this on its own. Looks pretty good, pretty good to me. Got this, got my DF pivot. I do int pivot. Come back, come back. It's okay. Oh, this is also giving us the data types too. Still sync. Oh, because I've done done the date on the joining date. Oh, what a, what a fail. Uh, I need date of birth. Get back. And in this. So if I go over here, date of birth. Birth. Okay. Yeah. That's that's still working for me. That's good. Okay. I'm just going to go and rerun this because I don't want. So I did some date conversion on the joining date. I don't want that to follow through. So I'm just going to go and run everything. Okay. There we go. So we've got that. Okay. Oh joy. Remove the duplicates. First of all, find the duplicates. If a customer. Okay, if a customer appears multiple times, take their earliest joining date. Okay. Save this. So, something here. So, we just need to go and work out 
and hang on. What we can do here is lean into something called ranking. Uh, this would be very helpful for finding like the first entry by by a particular date. Uh, so if we do, so if I go ahead and start make a column like the underscore pivot, call it that. A new column called rank that equals. So if I want to do df underscore pivot, want to Root by, root by my group by my ID uh, to arrange joining date. To in this case. Some Summarize do not join dates. Some white group has okay. It's out. Group by arrange. Group by arrange. Okay, I'm gonna have a look to see. Ooh, remind myself how to do this again. Rank group by order by. Yep, I'm not a robot. Uh, this is my. This is maybe it's because. Uh, yep. Yep, let's try this. So you get rank. So mutate rank. You group by. So mutate. Okay, and then, yeah. Uh, this. So rank, we've got, we just do rank. Sending joint date. Maybe just get rid of Ask. In that case, okay. look good. Give it. What I wanted it to do. Uh, hmm. Goodbye, Jean. This might be. A lot easier. <laughs> Diff pivot uh, by my my dear joining date. Miracle value <laughs> must be supplied. 
Okay, yeah, let's just... Thanks. More about web scraping. This is literally what I was after, so... It was very similar as well, so... Okay. Still think that actually looks all right. So we go and assign that to data frame. Is our keep rid of this. So now go DF pivot. It's pivot bracket DF pivot rank one to that one. Subsetable. Oh, I remember this. I'll do filter instead. Uh, so normal function filter, and I'll take your column to one. Okay. Yep. It's looking right. We'll look, see if there's any for rank two. One ID here. Let's have a look. Let's just make sure that my ranking is working properly. Just want to make sure that we're actually capturing this correctly. Yeah, this is working out what I'd expect. So, off earlier date is coming through first. So, that's good. I'm happy with that. So, rank one. So, if I go and say filter out just for rank one. Okay, so I'll put the data. So I think we're pretty much there. So DF pivot. I've just oh, oh not hit without the capital D. Yeah. So if I go and get rid of rank for a start, it's still in a nice way. Is there like a death? Nice way to drop a column. I don't think so. Uh, we can always do it's like those slices. So one, two, four, five. So do one to five. Yeah, so you can see I've gotten rid of rank. Thankfully, it was the last column there, so I can I can use that to my advantage. Okay, and I just got to go and change that that name there. So if I go and in, go into my names of my DF pivot, I want to change joining date to the actual word joining date, just because that's how the output is spelled out. So if I go joining date, pick two from that list. I've got joining date two, and now assign that to joining date. 
if I do names again, you see that that's, that's updated. So I've been able to change that. So this, this, Okay, so I've got that, so I've got my names, that all looks good. Um, chuck my in row, my df pivot, so this should tell me the number of rows. Okay, nine, let's check back. Uh, yeah, it's nine, nine, eight, nine, which is good. Okay, so I'm just going to go and write this as a CSV file. I'm going to cheat and go back to last time, so this so write my data frame df pivot outputs are a week week four don't write free again uh, okay let's tidy this up a little bit okay so we had we didn't need libra date that not plan tidy our read excel so we had we worked out using read excel work with this excel file so we worked out the sheet names first of those different tabs then we made this loop go through read the excel file those different go battle through our different tabs and retrieve all that data we then went and renamed all the columns the same name so they were consistent when we combine them together uh, we also included the sheet name which we needed later on yeah and then we applied them to a list so after applying them to a list we could then bind all the rows together to make one great big data frame which we called a big data in this so we got big data uh, we then went and used a little bit of functionality to change the month names into numbers so here we went for our levels month name change this into like a factorization character able to assign the two together okay so so we're essentially converting january to one february to two this this bit of functionality we then use that to make a date so we made a date as a string uh, year month year month day and then we convert that to a date using as date change the data type then we want to reshape the data we reduced it down we reduced it down to just the columns we needed we then went and used tidy r again to pivot wider in our id columns and then picking our names from those other two columns the names that were going to be our columns and then what values we're going to go into that in value okay so then we want to make sure they're all the correct data types so we can convert id to an integer uh, we created went back and changed date of birth to date function but using making sure that the format was month day year which it was in some of those dates okay we then had a duplicate customer who signed up twice we then used rank to find the first sign up date for each customer and then we went and filtered that rank away okay so we went and filtered that away which is good then we went uh, reduce the columns down, change the name of one of them, and then we and then we've got to do this last bit, which is going to write that as a CSV. So we go into all of that. That would be done. I can now go and have a little looky under R under outputs. There's my week four output right there. That's good. So that's done. So R is done. Too bad there. Okay, on to the last one, <laughs> the final one, uh, which is prepping data in SQL. Uh, so as always, I've gone and added these files to Snowflake. We've already done this ahead of, ahead of time so that we don't have to work through this too much. We will be doing less of line by line. We will just be churning through most of these different criteria in the same query. So this is going to be a bit more bit more work than the last two just because that's what SQL is it was a much older language so less functionality in it but let's, we can work through this so we've got this stage where we want to input the data we've already got the tables there we just want to 
do this first part. So we want to stack all these tables on top of one another uh, since they have the same fields in each sheet. So if I go and start doing my select, select star from uh, what we're we going to do. So PD and PD. Oh, and here we go. PD week four. Uh, so limit and then limit this. Okay, so I can retrieve my individual, individual my individual columns back. Right. So to stack them, I'm going to need to do a union. Okay. So I would then go union. Say this one main. Okay. Get rid of the limit. And then we're going to start stacking these rows on top of each other. So I'm going to just do this for every single table here. There's not a nice way to go and loop through and do them all like we had with hyphen and R. We're just going to have to just get on with it, <laughs> sadly. Uh, so this is some of the cases where SQL can become quite a long language because you don't have little tricks or little extra functions you can bring in all the time. So we're just going to get through this. Just gonna go every March. So got my union. Now, one thing to mention with union is it's not. A lot of people think it will just put the put the tables together, which it does. Uh, but what it also does is it will run a distinct clause against your work at the end of it. Now, I don't want that to happen, and it will cost extra time in terms of functionality. So if I was, say, to run this query, you can just about see the query, query dur 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 duration here, uh, 850 milliseconds. Uh, that's, well, a lot of this is it's having to run distinct at the end of this. So if I change this to union all, it will just stack them on top of each other without running that distinct. And this should be much quicker query. I'll say this, it was a little, it was a little quick. <laughs> uh, no, no worries here. Uh, but there's one thing to watch out for. Sometimes you will get this where union will distinct your results when you honestly don't want it to. Uh, oh, what I'm going to do, oh, I didn't mean to download the data. I just want to get rid of this for a second, just so we can, we can keep going with this because yeah, we just need to add in all the rest of these. So you need all June. July. Okay, so one of the things I just want to check is I've got them all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, Okay, I think I've got them all. Again, that's one of the issues we're having to write this all out. I'm gonna give this quick execute to make sure it all works. This has all come back. And this has all come back in the same format. Uh, so what's happening as well is that it's just taking the column names from the first table and just stacking everything behind it. So Thankfully, these tables are all formatted in the same way, but we know if, if you've watched some of the earlier ones, is that actually these tables they have different different um, they will have different columns. 
So there was some variation we had in terms of the names of, say, demographic. Yes, yeah, so here you can see um, for August, demographic has two I's at the end here. Uh, but that doesn't matter for SQL. SQL's been okay. It's just run through and added them all together, which is good. Okay. So some of the fields are matching up as we expected uh, due to differences in spelling. Those have already been merged by SQL, which is good. Okay, uh, make a joining date field based on the joining date, the table name and the year. Okay, so I've had a look. There's not an easy way to put the table name in there um, unless you go to like the system tables and pull that in, but it's not like I can query this table and then call a command to say, oh, what's the table name to bring that in? So I'm gonna actually have to go and write this in manually. Again, it's gonna, it's gonna be a pain to do. Uh, so bear with me. I do J January. Yes. I've got this. Let's take name. Just gonna have to do this again and again. And again, I'm gonna have to make hope I don't, you know, make a typo or anything like that. That's that's, that's going to be the issue with this. Is invariably you have to do the same thing again and again. A computer is very good at doing this, but for me, I'm more likely to miss one of them, leave one of them, say here is February, not change the date back. Just some of the disadvantage. Here's this December. I'm not even sure you need to keep the alias here for everyone else. I, I just have, just because it was easy enough to copy and paste. Uh, so I think the first one just needs that alias to have the name. Otherwise, your, your dates will come through as January. Nice. Yeah, February. Okay, so if I give that a run. Okay, so we've got the column now table name which has my my different months in it. Okay, that's looking all right. Okay, so done. So I've got to make now I've got to make a join date from this. Uh, so I don't want to keep doing every transformation for every single query in here because as we been mentioning this is quite painful to do <laughs> and also I'm likely to make an error for this so what I'm going to do is make this as a common table expression so if I do with CTE as this okay. let's have this out so or what this is doing essentially is just bundling all these queries together as one one query. Um, what like essentially like I've already run this and this can be queried as like a virtual table or something. So we have all this different functionality we can come back to. Just go and tidy this up. Okay, so if I go run that. Yes, yeah, so that's coming back. So now I can make changes to these columns to all the tables, all the data sets there. Okay. So what I'm going to need to do is work out how on earth I'm going to change that uh, that table name into an actual date. Table. So table name. Oh, okay. So. Uh, let's have a look. Convert month name to number. Yeah, and still now robot. 
So yeah, this is optional. Oh no, <laughs> no, no one wants to do this. Um, or the decode function. Okay, or to char. Of name. Okay. Let's go with this. Too many arguments for function and to date. Get rid of that last one then. Or we'll have a look. Let's have a look at to date. Date. Oh. Just takes the expression and turns it to a date. Uh, Do you not want to comment out? Nope, doesn't, doesn't want to play ball. We can just do that for now. January is not recognized. Okay. 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 Month name. So convert month name to month number. This is using PHP, which is not what I want. Um, close ten years ago. Okay. Take part. Okay. So let's have a look at the date, date part. Umph. Wait, something there. So month. Come on. Okay. <laughs> well, let's let's do this for the time being. I know I have at least got some faith that this will work. We change month name to table name. And do left that for free, change that to upper. This is my month number. Okay, yes, yeah, so you can see here, so these different month numbers are coming through. We've got here yeah, January going to one, things like that. Okay, well, that's a pain. <laughs> I'll be honest, I'm not. Didn't want it to be that that complicated. Didn't need to be. So okay, so there's a table name. So there's a month. Uh, how about date from parts? Okay, so I can take my year to be one twenty three. Take my my day. Okay. So this thing. Uh, 
and then I also have my uh, my joining date. Unidentify don't know what doesn't know what joining date is. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna give this a name of five for now and then find a star so I can work out what that column's called. Joining day, okay. So I'll look at least oh. Okay, I'm going to give this an A list as well. I'm going to call this join date. Add in here join day. Okay, so that's that's coming through. That's looking good to me. Okay, so, a uh, bit horrible. <laughs> I'm be honest. I don't don't. Don't like this at all, uh, but sadly it works. So there was that. That would be a nicer way of doing this, uh, and there probably is. There's always the case when you think of that. There probably is a better way of doing it, but but this we can always have a look later for a bit bit of a better way of doing things. So what else have we got? So we've made that joining date. Now we want to reshape the data so we have each field for different <laughs> art. Oh, Graphic each customer. Make sure that okay. So for this, what I'm gonna need. So this is where we want to try and pivot the data. So we want to reshape the data. So for our joining date, we need also we need our ID field. We're also gonna need a couple other ones. We're gonna call those those are going to be our, I think, um, see if those come back. Okay, so okay, so that's my data. That's what I want coming back, which is good. That I call that. Uh, I would call this another CTE. So. I'm gonna call give this a, a proper name. I'm gonna call this data stack. But I'm gonna go a bit better better term than that. Call that data stack. Rename that to that. So what I'm gonna do is give these names so I can at least understand what I'm calling. Um and call this I'm gonna call this pre-pivot. So that's what it is. Pre-pivot as a bracket, I think. Is the limit and then select star from the root. Okay, so there, yeah, play this up. I'm gonna do this once. Okay, so I've got my data come back, so I just need to go and pivot this. Oh, boy, I do not SQL pivot. And rows to column. Yep. Especially good for that, rows to columns. So, do, do, do. using pivot. Yeah, so this is where pick your values, select from. You've got to know what your column names are going to be in this case. Let's give this a go. This is saying select no. So it's going to be I want to select D and I want to select joining joint date. 
I want to call this ethnicity. Call this account type. Have to be called. Let's see if I can get away with calling it account type like that and then calling this date. So I want to select value or <laughs> yeah, you've got so that will be my pivot, hopefully. Me pivot and then I want to pivot select value. I don't want to I should be, it should be five for max value because they're for column name in so yeah okay for column name old it was here yeah, demographic it was Demographic. Oh. Identify type ethnicity. Uh, um, that's it. B. Ethnicity. Okay. Oh, sequel Make if it. Yep, can't seem to get Pip to work. Uh, I know the feeling. Um, number conditional aggregation. No, oh, he didn't actually pivot it at all. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, let's try this again. So select star from extra table, but three pivot, sub pivot, sum the value. It's value for parameter in for parameter name. Demographic in ethnicity. Nope. P says not step so that one okay so step name what's step name in this oh, okay so there's the ID columns uh, so instead of step name it's gonna be ID E, and then it's going to be joining date, not item one or item two, it's going to be this lot. I'm going to need to double quote these because I know it's not going to like uh, the spaces in between the columns or the upper case. Order by, I've okay, got order by ID. Okay. 
Okay, we'll give this a run. Oh, oh, nice. Oh, that worked. Okay. Oops, I'm quite pleased with that because <laughs> pivoting in SQL is is like the bane of everything for me. It's so so hard. It doesn't need to be this hard. It just it just is. Okay, so I've got ethnicity. I've got this. I got that. Okay. Okay, I'm. Can I check? Can I change these column names? Can I just have it? It just says ethnicity. Okay, so you can. Okay, so this is where you would name those columns. This is where you would find those text values. So, if, say, if I got spelt this wrong with this break, yeah, it wouldn't pick up ethnicity at all. Okay. All good. So, okay, I'm just going to tie this up. I'm going to put this in more my kind of sql way i like underscores i don't like spaces i like lower cases fine just so the case is the same and just want a bit of consistency you know a bit of consistency there we go so let's come back it's all good right we know what's coming we know what's coming next okay um so join date Got that, we'll reshape it. Yep. Make sure all the data types are correct for you. Okay, so welcome back to where we had before. So we can do ID, we can just convert that to an int as ID. Or we can do join date. It's a date. A date ST, I think, is fine. Count type is fine. Okay, date of birth is going to be all that's going to be a painful one. We're going to have a go at converting it. A date, right? Oh. Ah. Did that work? It sounds ridiculous, right? Uh, you don't expect it to work. Go with that. Let's see, oh, unexpected. So I need come on here. Okay, so yeah, and it's like yeah. In all cases, it's taking that, so it's going by the American date format. That's not too bad. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'm very happy with that. Hit buff. Okay, so don't move any duplicates. If a customer appears multiple times, take the earliest join joining day. Okay, so now I've got my columns. What I can do is I can work out which was their first state. So I can do this row function. I can go for you can go for rank, but I kind of like going for row number. Uh, row number. So it's functionality like a windowing functionality but it really helps with this so you can do other partition by just what we want to group it on which in this case will be id group it by the id field we also then want to order order by uh joining date do this joining date we can do this ascending which is callback you don't need to do ASC, it's just done by default. So you can leave it, it helps people understand what it's doing. Uh, so here, yes, I've got this row number coming through here. Okay, so we can look at this in a bit more detail. I didn't see any twos, so <laughs> we can have a look. 
So I call this a give this a name, give this call this another CT. So I call this post pivot as bracket this lot. That. So I can go and select star from post pivot where so I can do where rn equals one so where that row number equals one so no note you can't do it in the previous query because this is a because it's a window function it won't let you put that in a where clause sadly so I run that return my query so did I get any did I get any that were two oh look Okay, yes, so I've got one that's two. So this ID this eight. Eight this eight seven two one two. So if I go and have a look for this ID, I just want to check that my ranking is working. Done that. So that, that all looks good. I go from that for row number. Row number equals one. I'm back good. Okay, so that's removed any duplicates for this because with those multiple types to remove them from that okay all i need to do is just name my columns and that is that i just need to tidy this up a bit so let's just go and copy a lot of this down nope so like the shift of my keyboard has broken, uh, which is devastating. <laughs> so every time I try and shift tab to move something back, it goes the other way. Okay, this is looking good. It's sort of telling me here that my row number is 989. If I go back to the task, that's what we're after, after 989, which is good. So I'm Really happy with that, that that's done done the task. If I want to do more, I could go and just go and create this as a table, you know, write it to my database, but it there's enough here anyway. So I'm happy with that. I let's go and clean this up a little bit. So ugh, not the uh not the trimmest piece of code I've ever written, that's for sure. Uh, but this is how we had to do it. So we went through, we went to, through all our different tables and just union them all together. It wasn't a nicer way of doing this, really not. So we couldn't loop or anything like that. So we just go and union them all together. And that we use union all because union will run a distinct clause afterwards, which we don't want to happen. So default case, use union all. In this case, so it works. So then I need to go and prepare my data set before pivoting with this next common table expression. So here I've pulled in the queries we need. We then worked out that that date um, using the table names and also the joining date. Uh, we had to do, we use the case expression here. There's probably got to be a better way that you can get those date names into um, into a number format, but for the sake of time, this worked. It's got us there. We then paste that all together with dates from parts. So taking our year, our month, and our day, we joined with that. That all together. We then we then added in our demographic and our different values. We had that ready. So then we went into the pivoting mode. So we had the section here where we selected from our Pivot. We then pivoted on this value for in demographic and we listed out those different values that come back there from demographic. We gave it a name and then specified out those columns at the end. We then brought those through. We did some data type conversions for them. It all works nicely. We then wanted to find the earliest time that they had joined us, so we went with the row number over partitioning by those different customer IDs and then ordering those that are joined earliest in ascending order. Okay, that row number. 
we then have this and then just tidy things up we just went this query went and filtered where that row number was equal to one and put star data in there. that turned out quite nice nicely in the end didn't take too long a lot of code but ran quite quickly as well so all good there okay that about wraps it up so that's sql that's python and r all done i'm now going to go away and upload this code to my little prepping data github repository uh, where you can find the solutions there that will be a link for that in the description but have a go at the challenge see how you get on maybe you can find some different functionality that i didn't have last time so until until next time i'll see you in the next one and hope you have a good time bye bye